Welcome to another video of the School of Respirology. Today we will be talking about bronchial or segmental anatomy for navigation bronchoscopy. So here you can see the bronchial anatomy. So on the right we have the right upper lobe of course with the RB1, the apical segment, the RB2, the posterior segment and the RB3, the anterior segment. We have the middle lobe the RB4, the lateral segment, the RB5, the medial segment, and we have the lower low bronchus with the RB6, the superior segment, the RB7, the medial basal segment, the RB8, the anterior basal segment, the RB9, the lateral basal segment, and the RB10, the posterior basal segment. Then on the left, we have the left upper low bronchus, and there we have a little bit different anatomy with the LB1 plus 2 joint, called the apical posterior segment, then the LB3, the anterior segment, then the lingula, which is also part of the upper lobe, with the LB4, the superior segment, and the LB5, the inferior segment. Then we go to the left lower lobe with the LB6, the superior segment, the LB8, the anterior basal segment, the LB9, the lateral basal segment, and the LB10, the posterior basal segment. And here you see a schematic overview of the segmental bronchi and how they are located in the bronchial tree. The advantage of using the numbers is that you can talk to anyone in the world about bronchial anatomy and it also makes you work in a more systematic way, counting from one in the apical part of the lung until ten in the basal part. I have made a video before about the segmental bronchi and how to recognize them during flexible bronchoscopy. But I've noticed that also a lot of colleagues uh, struggle a little bit with recognizing all these bronchial segments on a CT scan. And that's why I make this a video, especially to get comfortable with recognizing the bronchial anatomy on the CT scan. So let's dive right into it. We slowly scroll down the CT scan. The CT scan doesn't show a lot of abnormalities. It's actually quite normal. And what we see first is the major fissure on both sides, which is the delineation between the upper lobe and the lower lobe, which can help uh, in your orientation. So first in the right upper lobe, at the level of the main carina, we can find the RB1 which has a kind of a cross-sectional appearance because of its apical direction. So next is the RB2, the dorsal branch of the right upper lobe. It has a more longitudinal appearance because of its dorsal direction. And then the RB3, which has a quite similar appearance to the RB2, but then in the ventral direction. Then we slowly travel down the intermediate bronchus and we reached the ostium of the middle lobe, so the middle lobe bronchus. And opposite of the middle lobe bronchus, as you know from bronchoscopy, we can see the RB6, the apical segment of the lower lobe. Then we continue to the middle lobe bronchus, which bifurcates into the RB4, the lateral segment and the RB5, the medial segment. Then we travel into the lower low bronchus and we can identify the RB7 or the medial basal branch. And finally, on the right side, where we can identify the RB8, the anterior basal segment, the RB9, the lateral basal segment, and the RB10, the posterior basal segment. And that concludes the segmental anatomy of the right lung. And now it is time to explore the segmental bronchial anatomy of the left lung. So first we can identify the LB1 plus 2, which has a similar 
cross-sectional appearance to the RB1 because it travels in an apical direction. And very close, moving into an anterior direction, is the LB3, the anterior branch of the left upper lobe. And as we travel into the lingula, it can get a bit tricky. There you can easily get it wrong because it doesn't have a, like a bifurcation uh, laterally, like the medial and the lateral branches of the middle lobe. It has a superior branch, the LB4, and it has an inferior branch, the LB5. And as we travel into the left lower low bronchus, the first segment that we see is the LB6, which is very comparable to the number 6 on the right side. And because they are so comparable and because they have really a very dorsal direction, they are great orientation points during bronchoscopy, also to recognize the rest of the anatomy. And as we travel further down the left lower lobe bronchus, you may wonder where is the LB7? Well, in most humans, the LB7 does not exist. Some, in some cases, you can find an LB7, but then usually it is absent on the left side. And finally, we reach the lowest branches of the lower lobe which are the LB8, the anterior basal branch, the LB9, the lateral basal branch, and the LB10, the posterior basal branch. So now we have seen all the segmental bronchi, but you may wonder what about the subsegmental anatomy? Sometimes you hear colleagues talking about RB3A and how exactly can you identify this on a CT scan? Well, it's actually quite easy. For example, let's go to the RB3. If we go to the RB3 and we see the bifurcation there, there is one branch in a more dorsal direction and one branch in a more anterior direction. And the rule is that the dorsal one is the A and the ventral one is the B. And this is the same thing on the left side. So on the left side, again, the dorsal side is the A and the ventral side is the B. And that is practically all you need to know about subsegmental anatomy. Let's take a look at the RB10 as an example. Here we also can see uh, one branch going off in dorsal direction right at the start of the bronchus so that you can call an A and the one going further in caudal direction can be called the B. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this a useful video. Now you can be a pro at navigation bronchoscopy because you know how to identify all the segments and even the subsegments on your CT scan. So have fun with navigation bronchoscopy and be sure also to check out the other videos on the channel. Bye bye.